good kid, but lately she's been getting picked on at school, and there are some other worries at home. So her folks thought it would be a good time to let her spend a few weeks during the summer down at her grandma and grandpa's farm. She works herself to the bone and never forgets a chore, but maybe we're counting our chickens early before they hatch. She's gonna wake up in a bit, worried sick that she fell asleep and forgot to lock the chickens in for the night. I sure hope that doesn't ruin her best summer ever. so many things, but there's a lot to worry about. But now, I think I may have a problem here too. I forgot to lock the chickens in the coop last night, and they got out. No, these are any old chickens. They're almost pets to grandma. I don't know. I started searching around, and I can't find any of them. That's a good idea. I'll search it on my phone. How do you find chickens? Maggie, it's giving me directions to KFC. Not funny. Maggie, I have to find them. Maggie? Maggie? Oh no, my battery died. What else could go wrong? I wish I could call God on the cell phone. Then we could just have a conversation. God, the mean girls at school are picking on me all the time. And now, I'm afraid about auditions for dance school. And Dad's job, what are we gonna do? Well, for now, could you please help me find those chickens? What you looking for? My grandma's chickens. I fell asleep and I forgot to lock them in. Oh no! Oh yes. Well, what do they look like? They look like chickens. They have feathers like you, but smaller. A beak like you, but smaller. And feet just like, ah, you're a chicken. Hey, you're the person who's supposed to lock us in at night, and you did it. We could have been eaten. Are you my grandma's chickens? Yup, meet Nugget and Scrambles. I'm Buttercup, and this is my little brother, Benedict. You're wearing party hats? <sighs> A giant chicken is talking to you, and you're focused on the hat. These are our party clothes. <laughs> I must be dreaming. You might be, but we're free, so I hope you never wake up. Well, now that I found you, we can all go home. Not in your life. We've tasted freedom, and we're not going back. Worms, dirt, flies, it's paradise. We're free, it's party time. We are never gonna be caged up again. But the cage isn't to keep you locked in, it's to keep you from getting harmed. Says the person who locks the cage from the outside. If it's so safe, then why don't you sleep in the coop? Get me another plate of worms and a glass of warm water. This is paradise, we're never going back.
go to the library. Why the library? I heard about the chicken who went to the library with the frog. What happened? Chicken went up to the library and said, book, book, book. And? Librarian gave him three books and he handed them to the frog. What did the frog do? Handed them back and said, read it, read it, read it. There's more to eat. You ever tried fruit? It's supposed to be healthy. Where does fruit come from? It comes from a tree. If fruit comes from a tree, where do chickens come from? From a pole tree. Come really? on. Yeah, yeah, Buttercup, lay off the chicken jokes. chickens. Chickens hate darkness. I can't, I can't take it. I want to go home. Scrambles is a chicken. I'm not lying. No, I mean she's a chicken chicken. What's that chasing me? It's right behind me. It's your own shadow. It'll be gone in a few minutes. I see what you mean. Scrambles is right. We can't stay here. Which direction, Faith? Oh no. I don't know where we are. I got lost searching for you. I thought you knew. Hey, bookworm, you're, su su you're supposed to be smart. Do you know where we are? Well, I read a map once. And? It said, you are here. So I suppose it's where we are. I'm not sure that will help. <laughs> We're all gonna scramble if you're overreacting. There has to be a road around here somewhere. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Did somebody call for a road? You have weird dreams. Thank goodness, Miss Road. I bet you know a lot. I've been around the block. Do you know this area? Do I know it? I grew up here. My brother is a freeway to the big city, and my cousin is a dirt road up the side of the mountain. But we don't talk to him anymore. He's crooked. Miss <laughs> Road! Miss Road, would you please tell us how to get home? Sure, but it'll cost you a buck. He won't tell us unless we pay money? Honey, I'm a toll road. But we don't have any money. <sighs> all right, all right. If you promise not to tell anybody, I'll give you directions for free. So no one know. I can't have people walking all over me if you know what I mean. We won't tell a soul. You better not double cross me. Why would the chicken cross the road? Okay, but you ain't gonna like it. Go straight that way. You're gonna have to cross the pit. A fear, fear, fear. Climbing a mountain of expectation.
shoes and make your way through the forest of the unknown. But I wish you the best. There is no way. We can't do it. That's almost too scary. Scrambles, I think maybe you worry too much. God says that when even when things are hard, we can have faith that he will lead us and never leave us alone. What's faith? Does that go for chickens too? Technically, you only exist in faith stream, so that's a tricky question. I just know that because Jesus has made me a child of God, he will never leave me or forsake me. Wow, how did I know that? Because you read it in the Bible, God's word, and it's in that big brain of yours, even when you're dreaming. I just brought it back to remind you. I'm glad you did, Bookworm. If I live by faith, I don't have to be afraid. What's faith? She had faith, you're Buttercup, I'm Scrambles. Faith means we trust God, even when things look scary. And God makes all the scary things go away? Not always. Like right now, I'm lost in the woods with a bunch of giant chickens. But I know he loves me and that he's in control. I'm going to trust him. love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy first peter 1 8 Overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15:13. Science has brought the pit of fear. 
It's working. We're doomed. I read somewhere that when you're scared, you should put on a happy face. Are you kidding me? Look, there's an actual big yellow happy face. You can't put a happy face on the pit of fear. I'm afraid not every book I consume is a winner. <laughs> that happy face thing is actually freaking me out a little. You're right. I'm sorry, Mr. Emoji. You're really not what you need here. Thanks for stopping by my dream, though. <laughs> Disciples get into the boat You'll meet me on the other side I'm going now to pray And when that boat was far from land The sky was dark as night A storm appeared and tossed the boat Among the towering waves And stepping out from the dark of night Guess who appeared? It was Jesus walking on the water He had come to save In the middle of the storm His voice rose above the wind Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help and trouble. Psalm 46.
think we've been walking for hours. I'm exhausted. Benedict says he's fried. Look, we're at the edge of a mountain. Oh, oh no! no! What do we do now? Duck! I'm not a duck, I'm an owl. You can't tell the difference between a duck and an owl. What's an owl? She doesn't get out much. Any bird that's not a chicken is a duck to her. <laughs> Miss Owl, you must know where we are. We're not a duck. Mountain of expectations? Yes, you are. As you can see, the mountain is very, very big, made up of many, many expectations. Well, at least they're not scary. They look pretty scary to me. What are expectations? Well, there are other people's expectations. That I'll be smarter or more athletic or prettier. There's my parents' expectations that I'll be a good student like my older brother. Or people expect us to lay so many eggs a month, it's terrifying sometimes. <laughs> Don't forget our own expectations, for if we do and say the right thing, we will never be harmed or disappointed by others. Oh my! The mountain is bigger and scarier than I thought. Faith, maybe it will help to remember what the Bible says, and there's only one expectation that really matters. I think this worm is on to something. Well, God knows me better than I know myself. He knows I'm not perfect, but a sinner. He knows that because Jesus has done everything I need to be saved from my sins. Wow, you must matter a lot to God. And what can you expect from him? That he'll never leave me or forsake me. And even if I have a mountain to climb, he'll walk with me and he'll keep making me more like Jesus. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. 2 Chronicles 16.9 Whoa, how did I know that? Never mind, Bookworm, I think I know. Come over here a bit. Look, the mountain just got smaller. Or maybe your perspective just changed a bit. But it's still there. It still looks scary. We shouldn't... The mountain didn't go away, Scrambles. We shouldn't expect God to take all obstacles out of our way. We'll have to work a bit, but I don't need to be afraid. God loves me and walks beside me.
must be it. The force of the unknown. Benedict wants to know what happens in the force of the unknown. I don't know. Nobody does. It's the unknown. We just have to keep walking through, but I'm just not sure I can. What? You're the bravest one of us. We can't do it without you. The unknown is one of the things I worry about the most. I read somewhere that what you don't know can't hurt you. Benedict says he's only an egg, and even he knows if you believe that, you're cracked. Wow, come out of your shell and tell us how you really feel, Betty. Like I told you, not every book I read is brilliant. Guess that one's another dud. I better stick to the Bible. Sophie, what scares you about the unknown? You don't know that something bad will happen, do you? No, Scrambles. I just know something bad might happen. Like my dad. He said that things are hard at work, and he might lose his job. If he did, I think we might have to move, and I lose all my friends. And who knows what else might happen? I think I know who knows, and so do you. Oh, you mean that God knows what might happen? He knows what will happen. Nothing takes him by surprise. One thing I know for sure is that Jesus died on the cross to pay my penalty for sin, and that he rose from the dead so I could have life that never ends. So no matter what happens, I'll be with him forever. Well, that makes this forest seem a bit less scary. Well, let's but quit. I still worry about what might happen with my dad and my friends and... But if you can trust God with your forever, maybe you can trust him with what, what's right through those trees. Wow, I'm just a little chicken with little faith. But if that's true, and yes, it is true. Because unlike some of the other things I've read, this comes straight from God's word. Well, then that means that God loves you, faith. And because it, you trusted Jesus to pay the penalty for your sins and that he will never leave you or forsake you and nothing takes him by surprise. Then I don't need to be afraid. I'm afraid? You're right. Well, to me, it sounds like the unknown is no longer unknown. Well, let's quit worrying about the forest, do a little chicken dance, and head on home. Do you hear something? Yeah, it sounds kind of like cheep, cheep, cheep. I hear it too. Cheep, 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 I speak baby chick. I can translate. Cheep, 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 cheep. They say they're on a picnic, and the farm is this way. Follow them. Are we sure we can trust them? Would baby chicks talk as cheap? <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing group of companions. Aw oh, shucks, we're all just chickens here. And uh, a few others. All I know is I felt like the sky was falling with fear and worry, but I needed to remember that nothing, no nothing can separate me from the love of Jesus.
in. We're saved. Come on, Faith. You go on. Suddenly, I'm exhausted. I'm just going to take a little nap, and I'll meet you at, at the coop in a few minutes. Faith, you poor thing, you must be exhausted. I am exhausted. I was up all night looking for your chickens. I forgot to lock them in last, last night, Grandma. I'm sorry, but I found them this morning and we got back thanks to a bookworm and God's word and Jesus walking with me and... I don't know what you're talking about, dear. This morning and last night, you were playing out in the yard and decided to take a little nap. It's almost time for dinner, so I thought I'd better wake you. So the chickens are okay? Buttercup and Nugget and Scrambles and the baby chicks? All present and accounted for. I must have been dreaming. Sounds like a good one. It was. The best ever. Well, it sounds like a perfect ending to your time here at the farm. We're going to miss you around here. Oh, and Faith, don't worry about the stuff going on at home. You know? You know, Grandma, nothing can ever separate me from the love of God. And nothing takes him by surprise. And he loves me so much that I can handle the unknown if I trust him. I can take courage and live by faith. Ah, well, yes, of course. Well, let's go get dinner. What would you like for in the morning for your bre last breakfast here at the farm? I was thinking, Eggs Benedict? Grandma, no! <laughs> God is our refuge and strength in ever-present help and trouble. Psalm 46, 1. Romans 15, 13.
I told them if I cried that they did a good job. And they laugh at me all the time because I cry all the time. So I am just so blown away by these kids. Um, most of these kids have been with us since we started. And to see the transformation that they've made. We saw a big change this year from the beginning of Monday morning. And we saw friendships made. We saw, we saw kids at the altar on Thursday night. And I'm just so proud at the way that they're growing and changing. And how their faith has come out this week. I am just so, so terribly proud of them, and you guys should be too. They learned a musical in a week. But most of all, their hearts, they love Jesus so much. And you guys should be proud of that, because that's, that's a testament to how they're being parented at home. So thank you for sharing your children with us this week. It was such a blessing and an honor to be able to be with them and to be able to talk about how our faith comes from Jesus. And that when we put our trust in Jesus, that he will guide us and direct us, and he will never leave us or forget about us. So um, I just, I'm just so proud of you guys. See, and I'm crying. So you guys do it your job. And um, I promised them during the week, if they learned their stuff, that they would get to make me into a Sunday on Friday night. And so I was covered in chocolate and caramel and whipped cream, sprinkles, and cherries. So um, if you see, uh, you can check it out on the kids' Facebook page because I was just actually covered. And, but it's all for the glory of God. So um, thank you for allowing them to be with us this week. And we can't wait to do it again next year. Um, but before we announce next year's program, um, remember, parents, that if you can be here tomorrow morning during our offering, our kiddos are going to sing a song to um, uh, be able to show what they have learned all week. And so we'll do that during offering tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So if your kiddos can be here, that'd be fantastic. All right. Is that all I was supposed to announce besides? Oh, we are, while she's walking up here, we are, so everybody knows, we, we could not have done this alone. Um, I definitely do not have the talent to teach them everything they've learned. So our directors, we will um, honor them tomorrow morning also after our kiddos sing. So we're not forgetting about you guys, our directors, and, but um, we just want to honor them in front of the entire church. So thank you, Paul, Renee, Julie, um, yeah. Pastor. Everybody that has helped, we've got, we actually had a lot of adults help this week. Um, Jenna, Aaron, Peyton, and Trin, you guys have all been so helpful to us this week. And if I'm forgetting anybody, I'm sorry. So, um, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much because we couldn't have done this alone. Well, tough cookie because you're getting double honored. So if you had any part in assisting with this week in any way, I need you to stand up for a moment, please. Yes, Miss Julie, that means you. She's like, not right now. All right, yep, we've got Renee in the back. Our dude's up there. They can't really stand. Um, and Miss Amber, I need you to like step forward. You guys, can we give it up for these people? You guys have no idea how much effort these guys put into this. Okay, the time that your kids were here, they were here earlier. When you picked up your children, they were here later than that. They didn't do it out of obligation, but they did it because they love you. They love your families. They love Jesus. They love everything about this. And it's not enough for them just to stay where we're at. Their vision in their heart is that it grows and it multiplies because you guys know the importance of the gospel, knowing the word of God. Everything you just heard from them comes out of the Bible. Maybe not the part of the chickens being ginormous, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> so if you had a wonderful time, again, Let's love it up. Let's clap for these people. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and our people in the back. Yes. Yes. Our emoji. How many of you just love that emoji? <laughs> that was hilarious. Yes, it, it's a blessing to be able to do this. We will be continuing this next year. So invite your friends, right? Let's help make this happen. Parents and grandparents, aunts, uncles, guardians, you guys, you were faithful in bringing them every single day. And we know that was not easy for all of you. So right now, we want to love you and give you a round of applause. Guys, clap for your parents. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the, it, kids, the kids would like to teach the parents a song. Oh. So kids, you guys want to stand up? Yes, please. And then parents, you want to stand up? You probably know it, but they want to make sure that you do the motions. You get a chance to participate. <laughs> We've got like four parents who are like, okay. No. Kids, Guys, we can do this, we'll right? We'll give you permission. If your parents aren't doing it, you can uh, ground them, okay? If you are physically able... I'm looking back at you, Josh. <laughs> you guys should be standing. He's like, why you got to put me on the spot like that? Because I'm a children's pastor, and that's what I do. Greetings, my friends. It is I, Maximo. And today I'm feeling like, oh, how do you say? A chicken. <laughs> so let's do the pollo dance. Hit it. Do your best chicken impression. Bob, Bob. Grab a partner or turn around in circles with yourself, like Maximo. Other way. Keep turning. Bob. Are you getting dizzy? Yes. Yes, you are. Chicken race. Bok, bok, bogok. We're getting faster. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. So you can do the chicken dance. Oh la la! It's super rapido! Ay, ay, ay. Nice job, nice job. They have so much energy. I don't know if you guys saw on our Facebook page when we were, we were posting videos, but they did like the monkey dance like a hundred times and still had energy and the rest of us, well, we're old, so we didn't have that kind of energy. But all right, before we head over to the fellowship hall for some treats, um, Miss Renee also made you guys all bags of treats, so make sure you take that before you leave. We are going to announce next year's um, musical title. Pastor Jason, are you ready? All right, let's show it, Mr. Paul. So we're going to have some heavy, hit, heavy hitters next year, and um, we're going to have some Bible characters crash our baseball game next year. All right, are you guys ready? Uh-huh. All right, so we will see you next year. Don't forget, we are going to celebrate your children for a few minutes over in the fellowship hall. Guys, you can go to mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever you've got. <laughs>